welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we have James 4.17. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Just trying to make sure I'm doing the right thing with the right people at the right place and do good. I've done a couple of pay it forward things. So, you know, uh, I'm trying to be godly. Let's put it that way. All right. Off the hook, I don't have anything. Um, in the basket, I still have the sweater I was working on for myself that is hot. And I have the poncho, which is hot. And then I have the round the world inspired. And I did make progress. Um, the thing with this is I don't have to have it on my blunt, on my lap to do it. I can do the little squares and throw them in the tote. So this doesn't get me as hot. So this is what I've been working on. But I have the entire purple row done now. I've got the white finished, the purple finished. Yep. And I even took some time. I did it at the table, but I wove in and nipped ends. I try to weave these in as I go um, and just crochet over them, you know, like you're supposed to. And some have gotten missed. Some have, you know, the center ones, I'll forget to nip those sometimes, but I've gotten them. I've gotten it cleaned up. And I did spend a night doing that. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. And it's looking much better. I was afraid if I left it to the whole blanket, it would be such a daunting task that I would never do it. That was, that was my thought pattern, you know. It's like, that's a big project just to weave in ends. So, I did clean it up and make sure that I'm going to do it. And I want to do it by the round so that I'm making sure I don't leave any behind. So, but you know me, I, I put off weaving it in, so I'll probably not do it. But I at least know I have it done up to the purple, the second purple row. So. Um, yeah, I've started working on some of the pink squares, but I don't have enough to put together a row yet. It's going to take over 50 to do that next row. And then after the pink, I'm going to turn it and do the blue one and start doing it. The only problem that I have is I am running out of blue. Um, so I'm going to have to go back and get some more blue. I'll take a little nip with me and see what I can find that's comparable to it and make it just kind of blend in. Uh, then let's see what else. So right now I would talk to you about in the dye pots and all that, but I don't have anything in the dye pots, but I ha did go to a fiber festival. Um, Kellyville's Christmas in July happens the last weekend of July. I was kind of disappointed. Um, there probably wasn't 15 vendors there. And of those 15, three of them were mills, which I didn't have any interest in really. Um, and three of them were just out of place. So the three that were out of place, one was a broom maker. It was cool to see, don't get me wrong, but no one was in there buying because that's not what they were there for. They were there for um, to buy yarn and take classes and get spinning fiber and spinning wheels and broom making just wasn't. And the, the whole time I was there, I never saw anybody go into that booth. The other one was a potter and she had beautiful pottery, not enough yarn bowls though. Um, I, I don't go to a fiber festival looking for stuff like plates and cups and bowl that. A yarn bowl would be what I would, you know, uh, that's the only thing she had that interests me. She only had like three of them. Not, it's about knowing your, your target audience and maybe it's just me. I don't know, but I didn't think that was a very good match to the venue either. The third one, the lady just, uh, Okay, so it was a lady who had mohair, who had angora goats, and she produced mohair rugs and saddle pads. Okay, this is fibrish, but she was billing them as old fashioned mohair saddle pads, blah, blah, blah. There is a place and a purpose for this in tack. We have some mohair, some wool. Those are your two choices for saddle pads. And 
they come in different thicknesses. They come in, you know, it, there's a purpose and a reason in, in, in buying a saddle pad. So she, number one, was in the wrong place. The cowboy that knows the use of a mohair saddle pad or needs a mohair saddle pad. We have one horse that needs a mohair saddle pad. So we own two. Um, the truth is, those cowboys are not going to be at that fiber festival. It doesn't matter how much you advertise or how much you, that's not a venue they're going to be at. Number two, when I said something about the price, she took my head off and said that, oh no, everybody had assured her she was too low and blah, blah, blah. Oklahoma is close enough to Canton, to Texas. If you go down in Texas, you can get those at least a hundred dollars cheaper than what she was selling them for. Now, yes, hand woven. Okay. Because they don't make mohair any other way. You can't find a commercially made mohair saddle pad anymore. The only people left doing it are handmade. So please do not try and light me up about handmade and but I'm comparing apples to apples. Okay. Down in Texas, not only do they raise Angora goats and there was a big government program that did it and blah, blah, blah. Yes, I know. And they do sell them for about a hundred dollars less. And the people that need a mohair saddle pad for actual use are just going to wait until they go down in Texas or have a buddy that's going down in Texas. People cross in Texas for us all the time. I could probably name you shoot Joe from Louisiana is down there. I don't know how many times it, it's just an interstate drive down and, and there's some amazing tack shops down there and they handle hand woven mohair saddle pads, or you've got your wool commercial saddle pads. Um, it is what it is. So anyway, she had, was in the wrong place because you're not a cowboy. is not going to walk into a fiber festival. You know, uh, somebody who actually needs a mohair horse owners that need a mohair saddle pad are not going to go looking for it in a fiber festival. They're just not going to be at the fiber festival. So she's in the wrong place. Then she talked down to me like I was stupid and it kind of irritated me. Um, even after I told her, yes, we, we've raised Angora goats. I know. Well, these are, nope, nope. You, you don't do that. Um, don't talk down to people. You don't ever know who you're talking to or who you're dealing with. So you really don't want to talk down your nose to people. Okay. So she was at a place just because the people that were going to buy her product for practical use were not going to be at that fiber festival to top it off. She was a little high compared to the hand woven ones you get down in Texas. And I cross over into Texas several times a year and you don't wear them out that fast. RJ goes, Oh, six or seven. I think he's been several times this summer. Um, I want to say he's been five or six times already this, this summer alone. So yeah, but I did pick up some treasure. Okay. So disappointing because there was three that didn't belong there. Three were a mill and out of maybe 15, a dozen to 15 people over half of them didn't interest me. So I really didn't have a very many boosts to pick from, but I did find a couple of people that know about a fiber festival. So, all of these are four ounce balls and I tried to, all right. So this one right here is the tunis. And as you can see, it's very springy. I love tunis. Tunis is a meat sheep around here, but I call it multi-purpose because it's just, now this tunis is a little bit dirty, but you know me, I don't care. I just pick as I go. And so if you have a problem with dirt being in there, hay, whatever, yeah, you might not like the tunis. Now, the other one I got, and you'll see that it's a lot littler. This is Targi, okay? And so you've got, both of these are four ounces. Targi is more of a drapey, long, you know, but 
Look at those fibers, and they're amazing. Look at that. So anyway, I like Targi. I found it, you know, I don't know, a couple years ago um, when I did the study. Now this next one, you will know why it's close to my heart. So the next one is a cross, and it's a Corey Dale South Down cross. Now this is also four ounces. So you can see Targi South Down Cross. It's just uh but look at these fibers. And this one happens to be like a it looks like they've blended a white, maybe a gray, or I don't know. But yeah. I think I'm sweaty. But anyway, look at that fiber. It's amazing and it's very cool. See how it's springy. I love springy. So, yeah. Oh, I can sit here and pre draft this just playing with it, but I've got to get to work here in a little bit, so I better stop playing with the fiber. But anyway, I found those three treasures. I love them and I bought four ounces of all. And over the next few weeks, I'm sure. I will be um, spinning them up. All right. The last thing that I have going on is I did splurge. I got a little bit of a bonus at work. And because my bills were taken care of, um, I took was able to take care of some things for RJ. And I, uh, yeah, I've only been there a month and I was included in a bonus, a cost of living bonus. So anyway, I did splurge and I bought something that I've always wanted. But I found a good price on it, and that is a sewing form, an adjustable, large, you know, to, should fit me, I hope. I can set it to my measurements, and hopefully it will be. Um, no more trying on and trying to hem on the ironing board. You know, I'd try it on and try and finger press where it should be, and then I'd measure it. And It's very hard to hem something that, you know, you can't really put on to, to pin. So now with the sewing form, I should be able to put it on, be able to pin it evenly. Um, I should be able to adjust straps. I should be able to, you know, the only thing that I didn't get was it is a form. And if I understand it right, it has an outer shell you can pin to, but you can't pin all the way through to it. So um, the ones that were pinnable that have the the big spots that you can pin to are big. I don't know what they're made of on the inside, but this one, when you pinned, you had to just pin to the outside casing instead of pinning to the form itself. Well, I got it for a really good price. It was just right over a hundred dollars and that included shipping and handling and everything. So and it's supposed to be here tomorrow. Um, yeah, the others were about triple that. And so I thought, well, we'll see if this is a good buy or not. Um, worst case scenario, so I can make a form to go over it that I can pin to. It, yeah, I can sew for my sewing form. You know, I can just make a casing for it with padding and I can pin to that. So, yeah, not really scared. And for what... They have, and, and there are kits out there that you could put padding to make your form look like you so that you have, because nobody's body is all the same. So I could actually get one of those and make it and then put a, a thing over it and pin to that. And I could do it for a whole lot less. I got this one. I want to say it was $129 and all the others were 279 280 on up to $320. So um, I thought I got a pretty good deal on this. I understand the whole pinnable thing, but it's better than not having one. And I didn't want one that I couldn't afford really, you know. So we'll see how it goes when I get it. The last thing I did was I moved my exercise machine down from, I think it's one of those ellipticals. That's what they call it, the little ski machines. I call it my sunny. The, the bottom of it is pink. There we go. All sunny. Yep. 
There we go. It's pink and white. And so I moved it down from the farm and I'm going to start working out a little bit again. But other than that, RJ's rodeo in, went to the fire festival, really disappointed me there. But yeah, so anyway, uh, garden is just producing okra. Roommate's happy. I'm not. Nothing else is producing. Um, we did get a little bit of rain. We got two and a half inches, which for us, it was great, but there's still big cracks in the yard. It wasn't enough to, to, uh, get us back where we needed to be. So, and it's definitely not enough to help the hay. Um, we still haven't gotten the hay in yet. So if you can find it in your hearts to say a little prayer, um, we're supposed to have another chance of rain. The, the hay really needs some rain so that we can get it in before it burns up. So, all right. Um, RJ's got a decent truck. He is rodeoing. I'm back in debt with the truck. But anyway, <laughs> it is what it is, just jungle juggling things. So, anyway, he's got a truck. He's going. In the farmhouse, of course, you see I'm bringing this down and just kind of crafting and and I am doing things. Just being kind of lazy the last couple weeks. I don't know, but I'm getting back in the routine. So honestly, I am super, super stoked to start spinning. I've done a lot of spinning here lately, so I've decided I'm going to get the gray off the uh, Miss Kitty. And once I get the graph, Miss Kitty, then I'm going to allow myself to start one of those. So we should see some spinning here in the next week. All right, guys, I got to get to work. You, I still have to get dressed. I have on a big old t-shirt, but um, I'm going to go get dressed, get my face on, go to work, and I will talk to y'all next week. Y'all be safe. Pay it forward. Find a little good deed. It doesn't cost anything to be nice, you guys. So if the world was a little bit nicer it sure would help. You know, I, I can't, what was it? It said, I can't do all the good the world needs, but the world needs all the good I can do. So, yeah. Let's live by that for a week and see how we do. Um, I've already started doing a few more little pay it forwards things. I wasn't in a spot where I could really do those for a little bit. Um, but there was a young man down at Casey's couldn't get his card to run. He just needed a snack and a pop. And he's, and he's like, there's money on that card. I know. So I just snatched stuff and I said, here, run this on mine. I handed it back to him. I said, hey, bro, have a good day. He goes, man, there's money on that card. I said, I don't care. I said, pay it forward sometime. I said, I have a son about your age. And if his card wouldn't run, regardless of whether there's money on there or not, you know, I would hope that somebody would make sure he'd get back on the road. And he just kind of looked at me. He goes, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I back in his truck and, and took off. <laughs> so, and of course I was the reciprocal of a pay it forward when we got a little bonus at work. So yeah, I'm still paying it forward. Do all the good you can, no matter how little or no matter how big, just do all the good you can because the world needs it out there. I will talk to y'all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.